In this video, I'm going to talk about vector spaces or more precisely about linear vector spaces. From elementary physics, we learned about vectors as something possessing magnitude and direction. We also learned how to add them using head to tail rules, how to multiply them with each other and how to multiply a number with a vector. Well, for that level, it's quite okay. But the idea of a vector is far more general than its picture of being a line segment with an arrowhead with or rather I would say this is only one special case of vector spaces and it is quite unable to correctly convey the whole the message about whole scenario of vector spaces. So for, for a general case I would like to begin from a very general definition of vector and that definition is this what you see a vector is an element of vector spaces in order to understand the whole idea behind this definition we need to correctly understand the phrase vector spaces in the first place so to this end, instead of picturing line segments decorated with arrow heads, I would like to be purely mathematical. And this will help you to wash your skull from the definition of vector with a line segment of a line segment with an arrow head at one end. So for this purpose, I would like to begin from the idea of a scalar field or the field of numbers, a very necessary concept for understanding vector spaces. A field F is a set of number with the property that if A and B belongs to F then the set consists of four elements with A plus B, A minus B, A times B and A divided by B also belongs to F. Okay. This set of four elements is called closure property. In order to further clarify this idea, I begin from different sets. Consider this set that represents all natural numbers. And if I carefully look at this set, 3 and 1 belongs to M, but, three, but 1 minus 3 equals minus 2 doesn't belong to M. And therefore, violate the second element and the closure property for for the closure property as a condition for a set to be a field F. Similarly, if I consider a set of all integers Z, again I can see that both 1 and 3 are elements of the set, but 1 divided by 3 doesn't belong to Z, doesn't belong to Z which means the set of integer also violate the four element of the closure, closure property for a set to be a field F. On the other hand, if I consider a set of rational number, set of real numbers, and the set of all complex numbers, one can easily check that all the four elements of the closure property for a set to be a field are obeyed and therefore these three sets can work as fields. Okay. One can find a number of other fields but for, for the purpose of this lecture Q, R and C are enough. Keep in mind from a mathematician point of view this definition of a field is not even a valid definition. However, for our purpose it is sufficient to clarify the concept of vector spaces. Now, acute with the definition of a field, we are in position to define a vector space V. Okay. A vector space V consists of four elements, V, F, the plus operation, and the multiplication operation. Where V by itself is a set of elements that obey certain rules. The plus operation implies that if u and v are elements of v, then the sum of these elements also belongs to the space v. Similarly, the multiplication operator implies that if c belongs to f and v belongs to u, 
then C multiplied with element U is another element that belongs to the space V. These operations further obey the following axioms. For U, V, W belongs to space V, it obey the associative property with respect to addition. There exists an element 0 belongs to V such that if it is added to any elements of U, it reproduces the same element which belongs to the space V. For A, B belongs to field F and U belongs to space V, the associative property with respect to multiplication is obeyed. For A, B belongs to F and U, V belongs to V, this property of addition and multiplication is simultaneously obeyed. There exists an element 1 such that for U belongs to V, when 1 is multiplied with U, it always reproduces the same element of the space. So this completes the definition of vector space. And every element U, V or W of the vector space V is a vector. You probably may have noted I haven't assigned a line with an area head to any element U, V or W of the space. Now the question is, what could these elements U, V, W possibly be? Could it only be a line with an arrowhead or possibly it could be something else? I would like to discuss this with a little detail along with some examples. And for that purpose, consider that the element UV belong to V are in fact column matrices of n rows with entries V1, V2 up to Vn and similarly U has entries U1, U2 up to N entries, where u i v i belongs to the set of real numbers r. Now, if we take these values of u and v and substitute into this one equation u plus v, you can easily prove that it is equal to v plus u and the sum at both sides gave rise the same matrix w, where the elements w i of vector w equals the sum of the corresponding elements of v i and u i and they belong to the set of real numbers r which means they obey the closure property. Similarly if we multiplied each element of v with minus sign constructing a minus v column matrix and then add it to v like v plus bracket minus v that will always give us zero where 0 is an n rows column matrix with all entries equal to 0. And if I add 0 to V, then I get back the same matrix, very trivial result. On the other hand, if C is a number that belongs to the set of real numbers R, and if I multiply that with V, then every element of V will be multiplied with C and I get another column matrix with entries equals C, V, I belongs to R, which again is an element of vector space V. Similarly, if I consider the field F to be the set of all complex numbers, then I can define two vectors V and U belongs to V, such that the entries V, I and C, I belongs to C. Then then following the same procedure as we did for the previous example, one can prove that this space also constitute a vector space because all the properties, all the axiom are satisfied. Thus for the element of V to be column matrices and the field F to be either the numbers belongs to the set of real numbers or the numbers belongs to the set of complex number C validates all the axioms for a vector space and therefore we can say and therefore we say that the field were real numbers and the field were complex number 
constitute two different spaces. One space is called real vector space and the other space is called complex vector space. Now let us look at another weird example of square matrices and ask a question for ourselves that can the set of square matrices constitute a vector space? The answer is yes, they do. In order to give a proof to this claim, let the elements u, v of vector space v be 2 cross 2 square matrices, where the elements of each square matrix are represented by u1, u2, u3, and u4. And similarly, the elements of v are given by v1, v2, v3, v4, where the elements vi and ui belongs to the set of all real numbers r. Now, now it is very straightforward to add these two matrices and verify that u plus v equals v plus u equals another matrix w where the elements of w are wi equals vi plus ui and belongs to the set of real numbers r. Similarly, I can multiply a minus sign with V to construct this matrix. Now, if I add V to minus V, uh, obviously we will get an, a matrix with all entries equal to zero and that constitute the zero matrix, this one. Similarly, for C belongs to the set of real numbers, I can multiply C with V to construct this, this, this matrix. Obviously, Every number vi multiplied with c is again a number belongs to the set of real numbers in, and therefore the square matrices qualify all the axiom for being a vector space. So a set of square matrices or a field of real numbers constitute a vector space. And therefore the space constitute the square matrices cannot be obviously assigned the concept of length or direction. The next example is about function. Can a function on the field of real numbers or complex number constitute a vector space? Again, the answer to this question is yes, and I will explain this by restricting myself to a special kind of function. I consider a function whose double derivative reproduces the same, the same function multiplied, by, multiplied with a negative sign. Then u v belong to vector space v. Then consider u and v be the element of v, and, and then in order to follow that property, u and v could be trigonometric function. For example, u could be sine of x, and v could be cos of x. We are x, and c belongs to the set of real numbers r. Now, it is not hard to prove that the double derivative of the sum of u and v is in fact equal to the double derivative of u added to the double derivative of v and of course following that property I can write that this is equal to minus u plus v. Also, one can prove that c multiplied with u differentiated twice can be written as c times u differentiated twice equals minus c times u. Thus, these two operations of addition and multiplication make sense that the axiom for vector space can straightforwardly be true one. We encounter such vector spaces constituted by function in quantum mechanics and electrostatics. For example, the wave function of a particle in a box is of this kind. The other example is the solution to Laplace equations, the solution to hydrogen, the solution to the Hamiltonian hydrogen atom that give rise to legender polynomial. You can say the polynomial difference. So from this we can say that different set of polynomial can even construct a vector space. In particular, the vector space constituted by the Hamiltonian of quantum mechanical particle consists of elements that are square operators. That in turn gives rise to some special function like trigonometric function, legendary polynomial, or spherical harmonics. So, so it depends on the nature of the field whether a space is complex or real. 
So stay tuned with us. I'll say more about the vector spaces, about the dimensionality, orthogonality conditions, the basis vectors, about vector spaces in my coming videos in this playlist. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly do that right now and also click the bell icon in order not to miss other updates I am bringing to you.